make sure this is on. Sorry, this is anti-climatic. All right. That's it. Nice. Let me get a hug, TJ. Yeah, all right, bless you. Amen. amen. He has plenty of time this morning. Can I get an amen? Well, praise the Lord. We, we're glad to be back at Westmoreland. Pastor Jerry's one of my good friends. We talk ever so often, and we just uh, have a good fellowship and a good time. And it's hard for us to get off the phone from each other. And uh, you all know that's hard to get off the phone with Pastor Jerry anyway, I think. But, <laughs> but uh, and Pastor Danny Judy sang up here. But, uh, but we do have a wonderful time together. And we so appreciate his ministry and what uh, he's accomplishing and, uh, and many uh, other parts of the world as well as right here. We just know that God has blessed this church in a way that everybody doesn't fully comprehend. Amen. Now, we go from church to church to church to church, so we comprehend a lot more. <laughs> and so, so we thank God. And we want you to be free today. Uh, I, have been work, I have been preaching in a prophetic vein of late. So that's where we're going today, and that's what we're going to attempt to allow God to do. Well, we are uh, serving in Nepal mainly these days, as well as India. We have served in India for many years. Go ahead and flip that uh, to the next one, next slide. And um, there is Kathmandu, Nepal. Uh, that's a Nepal flag, an India flag, and, uh, and of course the IPHC. But uh, that's a very large city that we live in, as you can very well see. That's only seeing one, not even a quarter of that city. It's very large. So next, uh, several million in that city. Next slide, please. Uh, and we believe that the ascension gifts, which are the fivefold ministry and leadership, are the keys to leading the nations to Jesus. And so that's what we do. That's what I do. I minister to our pastors and all the other fivefold or the rest of the, uh, the fourfold more uh, uh, ministers uh, to be able to encourage them in the things of God. Next slide. This is also our India ministries. We're finally going to get go back to India after uh, over over two years and uh, be able to minister there this year as the Lord wills. And uh, we have now we have grown to seventy five churches in in the Western Conference. We started that conference many years ago and uh, had two churches in the entire area, and now we have 75, and we thank God for that. Uh, yes, amen. Those are International Pentecostal Holiness Churches. Next slide. This is our staff. We are now one of our great miracles, as I've told you probably before, and I, and I, I can't remember exactly when we were here to try to figure out, so I'm just going to repeat. The fact is we are now a legal IPHC church in the nation of Nepal, which is a Hindu Buddhist nation. Ashok and Sunu and, and their children, uh, Ashok is our chairman of the board, and Sunu is our first lady of the IPHC church, and they're doing a wonderful job. I just talked to him Friday uh, at a very lengthy conversation. We, con we constantly in contact, uh, le helping lead as he is moving forward with the ministry. He is the assistant national director now also. Chase and Christina Grastaff out of the Fountain of Life Church, basically, and uh, they are do running schools of ministry. She's helping with the People to People program as well as all the other uh, programs that we uh, are part of. And then, of course, us, which uh, we're facilitating all ministries and leading the nation and... Uh, I want to tell you, I didn't know I could do that. I just didn't. I mean, until God put me in the position, I didn't even understand it. How many knows that we can do more with the Holy Spirit than we, we, when we can do ourselves? Amen. Next slide. That's Sister Judy. I just add to what he said. If we wait until we feel qualified, we'll never do anything. I can tell you that from personal experience. And I thank God that he stretched me beyond what I could even imagine before um, 
calling me into, uh, after calling me into the ministry and I saying yes. So we are so thankful for the people to people ministry. Um, the child sponsorship arm is what I'm in charge of. And I started the program in Nepal. I'm so grateful for that. We currently have just added 10 children that need sponsorship. If anyone's interested, I have their biographies, photos, just see me after the service. We're thankful for this. This helps our pastor's families. We primarily have pastor's children. We give that $25 a month and it helps clothe them, feed them, buy books and school supplies. So it is a very good thing. Next slide, please. We are known as Grand Danny and Grand Judy, and God just has given us so much because we, we left our grandchildren and went to the other side of the world, and the Lord has blessed us with precious children often in our home that we get to love on. Sometimes, you know, sometimes to look like Jesus, it might be uh, baking a batch of cookies or doing some decorating or letting them sit and read a book in your lap. It takes on many different forms, doesn't it? It isn't definitely isn't always pulpit ministry for me. Next slide, please. I can't read that. Any. Oh, the ministry teams. I'm in charge of teams. So when they come over, I get together all the logistics, which is quite challenging in our part of the world. Very challenging, I might say. And um, uh, it gets a little stressful at that last minute, but it's always such a blessing. I never thought people would travel as far as Asia and take their two weeks vacation, pay their own way. But we have had that happen over and over. We've had wonderful medical teams. We have a prayer room. They come in. Now, these are Hindu and Buddhist people that come to these medical camps, the majority. They come in. They share their need with that nurse, with that doctor. And then we ask them, would you like to be prayed for? And almost always they will accept prayer. And we've seen God do amazing things, save souls, heal, deliver. So thank God for what he is doing in places. We go into some very difficult places to hold these medical camps, and we're reaching some unreached people groups, which Danny will share more about, and that's tremendously exciting to me. Next, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other type teams, we have construction teams. I don't know why I'm having trouble seeing it today. Construction teams and ministry teams to come in, and all of them have been a blessing, all, all from America. Next, please. Women's ministry, that is my heartbeat, children and women. So as Danny talks about pouring into the pastors, the Lord has blessed me to encourage and pour into the women leaders. We currently, in this, in this nation of Nepal, where women are very marginalized, we currently have 60, is it 60 or 65 in that category? 60, 65 women pastors, IPHC women pastors and leaders. We're so grateful for them. Thank you. To God be the glory. You see, God has done this. It's like Danny said, we had very little to do with it, just obeyed him and followed him. These leaders, one of these particular ladies felt a deep call in her heart after pastoring for many years to stretch out and go all into Nepal in the hard to reach areas and share the gospel with other women. And that is happening even, even today. And we thank God for that. And next, please. People to people, disaster relief. You've given to disaster relief. We thank you for that. It gets where it's supposed to get. It might be beans, tea, rice, but you just don't know what that means to a family that's struggling and has lost everything. And you see gas tanks and just huge bags of rice, blankets, things that sustain them. Next, please. That might be all of mine. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. All yours. Isn't she pretty and very articulate? Uh, Judy, Judy don't, not only does all that, but she does the administration for us, and uh, everything's falling out here. And uh, we just thank God for what uh, her ministry is. Without her ministry, I could not do what I do at all because she gives me the leeway and those that are helping her give us the leeway to go and travel the nation, uh, province after province, 
uh, all over the, the capitals and all over other areas to uh, minister to pastors. And that's what this is about. These are other uh, churches and that we are reaching. Uh, next slide, please. And so this is, we're also, uh, you know, outreaching and planting churches. And so we've been able to give uh, amount, different amounts of money to be able to uh, start a church, help plant a church. And uh, they're required to, uh, you know, do their part. And uh, then we try to do our part. So if anybody feels led to give toward church planting, uh, our leadership development and either offering, it's something very well needed. Next slide. Before we left for uh, uh, when COVID, in 2019, right before COVID hit, I felt led to have a national meeting. Uh, and that is our chairman of the board translating for me. And uh, in this part of the world, uh, I have to have translators wherever I go. And because there's so many different dialects of even the same uh, language group. Next slide. These are those that uh, showed up. Uh, you'll see many pastors there. Uh, we expected, I think I've told you, but we expected uh, uh, about 150 pastors to show up from around the nation. Now, we're paying for their travel, we're praying for lodging, and we're praying, paying for food while they're there. And so we got to get them there and get them back and feed them as well as have the meeting. So that's part of, that's part of what we do, and we're about to do that again uh, this last February, we held six of these conferences throughout the nation. We traveled from place to place. COVID had restricted us to 50, but in two or three places, they got away with that, I guess, because they brought in more than 50. And let me tell you, since you are Pentecostal, we had some Pentecostal meetings with our pastors. I mean, Holy Ghost filled heaven worship. It was amazing what God did during that time to encourage our pastors and be part of what he's doing. Next slide. I've shown you this. Now that's 500 pairs of shoes. When, you're, when you go to a church or you go to a home in Asia, you take your shoes off before you enter in for a lot of different reasons. But to me, that's one of my favorite pictures because it represents 500 gospel toting pastors. <laughs> Amen. Uh, next slide. And as you see, we expected 150. We had 500 show up. Well, our budget went from $5,000, which we were raking and scraping and, and uh, doing everything we could, overnight to $12,000. But let me tell you, I said, what, Lord, what? But within two weeks, God paid that extra money, and I never asked one person for it. God has was good. Can you say amen? And he's always good. Next slide. So we have now 708 churches in Nepal. Amen. That's up to date number. 708 churches. And God is, I mean, that represents over 35,000 people within these churches. God is good. And so we needed a headquarters. A year and a half ago, we start, God spoke to me, start raising funds for a headquarter building. Jude and I felt led to give the first offering. So we that's how many know seed time and, and harvest. Amen. So we gave the seed. And as of to date, $415,000 have come in. Now we're we originally had 390,000 as a project, but we realized that uh, uh, everything's gone up. And also, we have to furnish the place. So we're going toward 500000 So pray for us, and you can give toward that project. This building is the one we're attempting to get. And so it's two and a half stories. Those are terraces on top. We can actually do trainings and, and ministry there on top of our building. 
And so this would be a headquarters and a training facility. And uh, so pray with us about that. Next slide. You can sort of see in the next slide a little bigger picture of it. But that's a, that's a real ethnic door. It's wooden and it's carved out. And uh, it's beautiful uh, Nepali-type uh, ethnic door. It has no Hindu symbols or anything like that. So all, all that's good. Next slide. And that is partnering with us. We, we appreciate what Westmoreland has done. We appreciate those that are partnering with us. Uh, you will, we will have a um, card at the end of the service that you can pick up from Judy. And uh, you can fill out that card if you do not get our newsletter. And our, you can fill out that card to make a monthly commitment to help us. We're always needing help to be able because with, you know, we went, we went from six churches uh, over uh, five years ago to 700. So we're constantly moving in the nation of Nepal. We need your help. Now, and this is bringing growth. Amen. So when you're giving to us, you're not giving to us just personal. Uh, you're giving to the ministry in general. And this, this, this coming time, I'm taking a little more than I normally do, but uh, uh, this coming time, we're going to be doing a great big pastor's conference it's going to cost us several thousand dollars to do that. So if you feel led to give, then you uh, make that out to the pastor conferences, okay? And, uh, and God will bless you for it. Now, let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Uh, no, wait a minute. John chapter uh, 1. I, cha I changed it in my mind, so i gotta, I got to catch up with myself. John chapter 1 in verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, and everybody say, full of grace and truth. Let me tell you something. The word was made flesh. Let's stop there, and I want to make a declaration today. Is that okay? Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I release the word of God. I release the king's will for this service, his kingdom power, his authority, his righteousness, his love, his presence, his mercy, his healing, his transformation, his miracles, his prophecy, his words of wisdom and knowledge, his pro promises fulfilled in this service and growth in the body of Christ. I bind the enemy's strategies his arrows, his temptations, his schemes, and his plans. I loose the Holy Spirit's power and the angel ministries. I ask for us to be surrounded with encounters of God's love. I decree this day that God's transforming power will transform us into his image, that the kingdom will work in us, through us, and for us in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You ought to say amen. amen. You know, a lot of times we come and we listen to sermons, it's all wonderful and it doesn't change us. We don't allow it to. And that's the point. You've got to allow the word to change you. Can anybody say amen? amen. You've got to allow the word of God because God is always trying to show us how to be like him. So he came to earth as flesh and dwelt among us. But here is the thing that Revelation tells us. He came to dwell and tabernacle in us. Matthew tells us that he came for his whole kingdom to live within us. In fact, we are the house of God. We are the Old Testament tent of meeting. We are Bethel. We are the temple, the tabernacle. We are the Ark of the Covenant because we house the presence of God. Now, think of yourself a little higher. Because 
When Jesus came to dwell with us, he Bethled with us, he housed with us, and wherever we are and wherever we go, Jesus is with us. He's not only with us, he's living in us. I, I, this is the summer of discontent. God spoke that to me several months ago, and I have understood that many in the body of Christ have been discontented because of what is going on in our nation today and around the world, I may add. We're, 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 not, we're unsettled. Can anybody say amen? We, we just can't believe what's really going on around us. We can't believe all the evil and wickedness that has been let go in our nation. It's gotten stronger and stronger, and we've become discontented. Many have become discontented even with the church. But let me tell you why we're discontented. It has nothing to do with what I just said. Because our discontent comes from God. God is unsettling us. We've been too settled. We have been too comfortable. We have been too comfortable in God's church. We've been too comfortable before a living God. He's unsettling us. He's making us discontented because it's a divine discontent because he's bringing us closer to him and all the other things because why this is the time when everything that can be shaken will be shaken and everything in our life that needs to go will be shaken out of us that's an unsettling can you say amen that is not easy that's a change that takes place. It's like getting healed and you realize you felt God's healing. You felt the pain leave you at the moment. And then you go back and on, that's on Sunday and on Monday you fight, and the same pain comes back. Because yeah. God's trying to get you to fight a fight. Because yeah. you got to fight to fight. Yeah. You got to fight to get what the word of God says. Yeah. The enemy's doing everything he can to stop you from getting what God said you can have. He's also uh, take, trying to take away what God says who you are. If it is God, it is us. And I know that's audacious. But if we are supposed to be, how many, uh, we, we sang forever to be like Jesus. That's a sweet song. Oh, it's so sweet. And it is. I like it. But did we ever know what it really meant? It meant that the nature of God has to be coming through us to a lost and dying world. It meant that if God is love, then we are love. You say, I can't say that. I don't feel like I'm love. But no, you don't. But you're fighting for it. You're coming into that. I'm a healer. Well, I, 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 I'm too scared to pray for somebody for healing. Well, quit it. It is time that wimpy Christianity fell by the wayside and power and authority with God became our everyday norm. Everyday normal living. Everyday normal living. Not, not, not allowing the enemy to come against us and take anything from us. And he will, and he has, and he'll continue to try. Even Paul said at one point that Satan gained advantage on him. Even Paul said that. Well, I want to tell you something. I've taken a stand. No more. No more. No more. 
Satan's not going to take advantage of my life, my wife's life, our family's life, our children's life, our grandchildren's life, our great-grandchildren's life. He's not going to take advantage of us in Nepal. He's not going to take advantage of us in the USA. And I'm saying he's not going to take advantage of the USA because the USA will be saved. And I will not stand for anything less than that. I'm taking a stand. It don't look like it. Every time you hear the news, it seems to get worse. But how many knows it's always darkest before the dawn? It's always darkest until the light actually comes in. It's always a, a trying to strip you of everything you have until you get a hold of God and say, No! It shall not be done in my place. And you raise a standard. That's what it's all about. You raise a standard against the enemy. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you something. This is also that time of transition. It's the, you know, the Bible talked about in the, fu in, in the fullness of time, the Gentiles actually were able to come into the kingdom of God. We were able to be saved. Unless you're a full blood Jew, as my wife is, that was her heritage. That's her heritage. But also, Jews are not really Jews till they really trust in God. Can anybody say Amen? And they're not saved until they're saved in Jesus' name. But the fact is, we're not either. But when we did get saved, and I don't mean made a confession of faith. I appreciate confessions of faith. It's at least a start toward getting actually saved. But I want to tell you something. When I got saved, I got changed. I, when I encountered Jesus, I was never the same. When I encountered Jesus now, I'm never the same. Can you say amen? Salvation wasn't a one-time experience for me. I am being saved over and over and over again every day. The fact is... We are in a time of transition. God is transitioning us to who we're really supposed to be. He is making us discontented so that we will make a change. And we will make our own declarations. And we will say of the Lord, he is my God. And I will not be denied. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1 through 4. When you go out to battle against your enemies, anybody have any enemies? I'm not, not, I'm not talking about flesh and blood, though that could happen too, but I'm talking about demonic entities, Satan's imps that's coming against your life and see the overwhelming numbers of them trying to come against you. In this day, horses and chariots and people more numerous than you. It says, do not be afraid. When you see the enemy coming after your grandchild, do not be afraid. They may go that way. Everybody has a free will and free choice. Can anybody say amen? But you will not allow them to stay that way because you are going to see the enemy has no hold on mine. He may tempt. And they may give in to temptation, but he has no hold on mine. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God is with you. For the Lord your God is with you who brought you up from the land of Egypt, taken out of that bondage. And by the way, uh, Pastor Ricky and the worship team, y'all couldn't have sang any other songs that would have uh, fit as well as this is today. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle. Well, let me tell you, we're not on the verge. We're in battle. We're in warfare. In fact, God's trying to call watchmen to the wall. God's trying to call warriors. In fact, God spoke to me several months ago and said, I am changing the name of my intercessors. 
I'm changing the name of those of my children that have stepped up to intercede. He says, now I am calling them warriors. And I am calling them warriors of the warrior clan. We're not alone in this. Jenny and I, uh, when we are in town and, and in, in the States, we participate in a Monday night prayer meeting about interceding for our, this nation. And as a result, we've seen several things. God has opened up our eyes to many other things in, and, 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 and grabbing hold of every part of our nation and believing God is going to bring back righteous leadership going to bring back biblical values in our laws. We're going to bring back actually standing on our Constitution and actually understanding the checks and balances of, for this nation. And I'm believing... <laughs> God's going to make this nation great again. I, I am not reiterating a campaign speech because it never rests on one man's shoulders. It never rests on one man's shoulders. It has to rest on the warrior prayer intercessors that changes the nation by their prayers, by their belief, and by their understanding. And while one or a few may get up, and make great speeches, it will not happen till God shifts this thing. And it will be by our prayers. Now, I will tell you, there are places where God is beginning to shift already. we I was preached to all of my life. I grew up Pentecostal and said, there's an end time revival coming. So let me tell you about your enemies they're going to get stronger because they've been empowered. But we're going to take the power out of their steam. Hear, O Israel, today you're on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Deuteronomy 20 is a declaration for battle. And, it's, and when it happened there, it is not so. This is our example of our declaration to battle. We are warriors. In fact, right now, say it. I am a warrior for God. I am, I am, I am, I am. That's who I am. That's not what I'm trying to be. That's who I am. Paul said, I am the righteousness of God. How audacious. Why would he say that? Because when you really realize that you get your strength and you get your own righteousness from his righteousness, then you claim that as your own. I don't look righteous all the time. I don't act righteous all the time. Do you? I hope you do, but but y'all, this is an honest crowd. <laughs> this is an honest crowd. It's great. The fact is that we're working on that. We're to be like Jesus, but we're working on that. I'm fighting for it, though. When I do something that is, and I'm doing less and less because I've been fighting for it, when I do something that is unlovely, then I repent and ask God's love to come through me. Amen. If I do something judgmental, I repent. Because if you judge people, you'll be judged. Now, but you have to judge righteous judgment. You're not, you're not judging people to hell. That's God's priority. Can you say amen? You're judging the situation so you'll know if it's right or wrong for you to be part of it or not part of it. There's a righteous judgment according to Galatians. We have to judge righteously. Okay, 
Second Chronicles chapter 20. I want to read a lot of scripture here, but I'm going to, I'm going to cut it down. What I'm asking you to do, I'm going to give you homework. <laughs> what I'm asking you to do, read more of, of that chapter, Deuteronomy 20, and see some of the keys that you can relate to what's actually going on today. And in this same chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in fact, you could go all the way through chapter 23. And you're going to see some things that astound you. You can also go to Ezra chapter 4, 5, and 6 and find out that this book is really contemporary. Because what's going on, what went on then is actually going on right now. There's an enemy fighting against the children of God that want to do God's work. In Ezra, they were trying to build, uh, rebuild the tabernacle. The, gate, the wall's already been built, but they're trying to rebuild the tabernacle. And they had people writing letters to the king, telling them, telling the king that he was not going to receive his right tribute because they would give it to this temple. And when the king found out that it was Cyrus that had made the decree to rebuild the walls and the temple of God, and the temple of God had never been fully rebuilt, when he found out that Cyrus had made that decree because he asked them to go find the scroll. He literally told, told those guys that wrote the letter against Israel, he said, anybody that comes against them, they're going to be punished. And if you live in that area, give tribute to the temple. And he said, like Cyrus said, I'm building the temple because I want them to pray for me and my family. That's what he said. So we're going to find somebody in, in the head of this nation that wants prayer for himself and his family and for the nation. Can you say amen? That's who we're going to vote in. That's who we're looking for. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know who it's going to be. But I know that that's what I want to see happen. I also know that there's some people being used now of God to open up and so we can find out who real enemies are. Amen. Who real enemies are. Oh, I won't get in that. I, 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 whoo, I, I better not. I better not. Chapter 20, it happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And he said... A great multitude is coming against us. Or they said to him, a great multitude is coming against us from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they are in Hazanon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. How I many knows we all have the temptation to fear? He feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast. Read the rest of this. It's beautiful. I don't have time. But there's a prophet that stood up in verse 14. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Matatinai, and the Levite, the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat. Normally that would be disrespectful, speaking to the king that directly. But he's speaking under the Spirit of God. He said, Do not be afraid. There it is. Do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of this. Spirit of God is telling them how the, how the enemy and where he's coming into. You see, the enemy will uh, try to come in different ways in your life, in your family's life. But you've got to become a watchman so that you can know before it happens where he's coming 
so that you can cut him off. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jehurael. I'm going to tell you something. If you know where God's coming in, and we've allowed God in, even the Pentecostal people, spirit-filled people, speaking in tongues people, we've allowed God in because of our anger. When we get angry at people, you open a door to the enemy. You give him the right to talk to you. When you're jealous, when you're judgmental, when you're disappointed in others, that can be an open door if you're not careful. When you get into depression, it's an open door. When you get into disillusionment, thinking nothing's ever happening in our church, nothing's ever going to take place, that's an open door. Because I'm telling you, it is going to happen in this church. It is going to take place. The glory will come greater than you've ever thought. God spoke to me and said, there's the glory clouds coming. That God is going to rest upon places. It's not just churches, but in churches and in places. A glory cloud is going to come. And when you get into that glory, you will never be the same. Can you imagine the glory cloud circling over us right here? Can you imagine what God wants to do in our midst? Can you imagine the presence of God so strong that you're not going to be able to sit in your seat? You're going to be on your face because God is here. The weighty presence of his glory. I am praying for it. You spoke about glory in one of your songs. We prayed for glory. When we came down here, we want God's glory. We want his presence, his manifest presence. Yes, we get his presence when we worship. Can you say amen? Yes, we get his presence when we pray. Can you say amen? Yes, we get his presence when we hear the word of God. Amen. But I want to tell you, there's a difference. Some of you in Pentecost, years ago, you experienced when God walked into the building. It was holy, 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 holy time. It was different than ever any other service. It was a time in which it's time to repent because your holiness didn't look like God and you needed to let it go and you needed just to worship every part of his being. The glory is coming. You can position yourself because he said, you will not need to fight this battle. Now here is the oh, divine twist. Here is the divine tension how many knows that there's divine tension in God? He tells you to give all, and he tells you to go here and go there, and you think you've given all. Amen? You think you have been stretched as far as you can be stretched, but all of a sudden God asks for more because he's trying to change you and help you. He's getting you to look like God. He's getting you to act like God, and he's stretching you. It's a divine tension. Here's the thing. We are warriors. We're fighting a battle, but it's a battle of prayer. Can you say amen? And you may be a battle of your vote, but it's a battle nevertheless. The fact is, he says, position, that's the next, position yourself for battle. Now, when we read Deuteronomy 20, the battle is the Lord's. And yet he's telling you to get into the battle. See, a, a divine matrix, a, a divine twist, a, a divine tension. How do I get into the battle if I'm just supposed to follow the Lord? That is the battle. Amen. That is the battle. That's the battle of your own life. That's the battle of the path that we're supposed to be following. That we, that our battle is to follow the Lord. Amen. That's it. You don't have to pull out your sword and kill the enemy because the sword's coming out of the Lord's mouth and going to destroy it at the end of time. Can anybody say amen? You just position yourself. 
behind God. Follow him. When we went to India together, God had already been speaking to me, but when we went together several years ago, God began to speak and talk about how to bring 15,000 churches into God's kingdom. And, the, and many of them, most of them, I guess, going to be IPHC. And I feel like I'm just getting started. And some people are astounded at 708 churches. I mean, absolutely astounded. Missionaries are astounded. Other people, are, I am not. Because that is not even one-fifteenth yet of what God says. I mean, I mean knows that when you start following God and God starts speaking big things to you, there is a path and process. And all of it is position yourself behind God. He'll shield you. He'll show you. And you just hear what he says and do what he says. Position yourself. Stand still. That's in your heart. And see the salvation of God. Again, he says, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. So in this summer that we've had of discontent, in this time of change, and God trying to bring us to that, into transition time, I'm telling you, God is about to bring in more than just transitioning. He's about to bring in transformation. It is more than just reforming. You know, it's more than just reforming. It is a change from your toes to the head. Amen. It's a change in your heart. It's a change in your mind. It's a change of all kinds. I had a vision while we were on the prayer retreat last year. We went with the Heart of the Nation prayer retreat, treat, uh, a tweet, a treat that, uh, that we, we had 52 of us all traveling in different cars together. And God said, it gave me seven visions at, uh, at the time as we were going along. And I, I could get in all seven of them, but this is the one I want to tell you in transformation. I saw an explosion in Washington, D.C. It looked like a small atomic bomb because it was an arc of light when it exploded. And I actually saw the street when we were standing by the replica of the Liberty Bell and praying. I saw the street that I saw it in my vision before we were there. And I don't know if this is literal or spiritual, okay? Like Paul didn't know if he would caught it in the third, you know, he didn't understand it exactly. And I don't know if this is literal or spiritual, but what I saw when that explosion went off and this arc of light came over, a great storm began to happen. It was a storm of massive proportions. It was a heavy, heavy rainstorm. This rainstorm began to flood so much, it was like waves of water going through the streets, first of Washington, D.C., and then in many areas of the country. And no part of the country was left out of the waves. Well, let me tell you, God said, I am the storm, and I am bringing transformation to these people and this nation. That all the prayers that they have prayed, if not falling by the wayside, I have heard and I will answer those prayers. And I will see that people on every street are transformed by the power of the kingdom of God. You can feel it, can't you? That's God speaking there. It's a rhema word. It's a now word. It's a word that says it's time for that revival to come. It's time for that transformation time to come. It's time for the glory cloud to come. It's time for the presence of God to come. It's time. It's time. It's time. And, and let, me, let me say another thing. God spoke to me. And I don't give it in 
every place, but he spoke to me, and I'm getting it here, that those that have been faithful for many years and have prayed prayers for many years, are you listening? And you haven't heard or seen the answers to those prayers. Now remember what he said, those that have been faithful. He said, this year, and it's already September, this year, I am rewarding my faithful. You're going to see at least the beginning of the answers to your prayers, if not the full fulfillment of many of them, even this year. This is the Holy Spirit trying to give you encouragement. You see, this is the prophet that said and gave encouragement, don't fear, don't be dismayed. God's not off his throne. In fact, God is going to win the battle for you. And that's what God is raising up in this hour, prophets, to encourage you to stand in faith, to believe in faith, and to know that God is going to do this. I thank God for the prophets that I listen to that I feel that I feel are right and faithful and, and, and ministering the very good things of encouragement. Is that every prophet? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, every time the people of God tried to do something for God, there were prophets of doom and dismay trying to come against them and stop them. Well, I am not a prophet of doom, except to tell you that in the end of time, the Bible says in Matthew that things are going to get worse and worse. Do you know that? That's good because that's Bible and God's allowing it for his purposes. But let me tell you something better. His children are going to have and get better and better. We have the biblical example of Israel coming out of bondage. Amen. And God leading them to a promised land. Were they without fight? No, they had to fight for it. Were they without trouble? No, they had to work through that. Were, the, were, were they led around in a wild goose chase for 40 years? Yes, because they wouldn't come out of their trouble. They got caught back up into that understanding that, oh, woe is me. We would have been better off in Egypt. That's like saying, oh, woe is me. I've been better off now as a drug addict like I used to be. You were never good as a drug addict or a drunk or anything else. You came to God because, some of you came to God because of those things taking a hold of your life. Or because you saw somebody else they're taking a hold, and you say, oh, I, that's not going to be me. I'm coming to God. Amen? Amen? God is saying to us, transformation is here. It's happening. It's beginning to take place. I'll give you two quick testimonies. Pastor Abraham, one of our IPHC pastors in the south of Nepal, not far from the India border, several years ago, he was a jujitsu expert. He used to go with his party and literally go out at night and kill other people. He said as high as 60 in one night. A young man, a teenager, was out in the marketplace and he was there and he recognized him. He knew who he was. He's scared of him, but God said, go give him some tracks. He didn't know how to do that. He was scared to just confront him and hand him anything. So he took a handful of tracks, went over, stuffed it in his pocket, and ran. He took it out, throw it away. He missed one. His wife took it out when she was doing the clothes, just put it on the counter, and he walked over. He said, I wonder what that was, and began to read. He got saved. God began to change him. The big change came because his mother was literally going insane. They had doctors. They had witch doctors. They had all kinds of people trying to help her. 
She seemed to just get worse. A neighbor said to him, your mother is going to go insane totally unless you take her down to this church down the street and have her prayed for. So he walks into the church and he's smoking when he walks into the church, right into the sanctuary. He didn't know anything about church. Anyway, before it was over with, his mother got prayed for and she got delivered. Abraham, that's his Christian name, became a pastor under that pastor before long. God began to train him. Now, this day, he's trained 32 directly pastors that are pastoring churches. Pastor David, which I also met at the same time, was a man that used to rob trains. He had a shotgun. You don't have guns in, the, in, in Asia. They're illegal. But somehow, illegal, I better not get into that. Uh, well, some of you now are curious. Well, criminals can get guns. <laughs> I don't, that's as much of the political statement I'm going to make, Pastor Ricky. The fact is, Abraham saw him in the marketplace one day, and he began to witness to him. Pastor David became saved, delivered, set free, went under the tutelage of Pastor Abraham, and he's a pastor today. This man is very dark, but he is handsome. I said, I wish I had your handsome looks. Anyway, I, you know, he's, he's so handsome, and his wife is so beautiful. They are a great couple, great couple doing God's work. God still transforms people. God still trans. Some of you right here could give me some testimony of God's transforming power. But we're coming into the time, and here is my final say this morning. Uh, Judy. Here's my final say this morning. God's going to do things out in the marketplace, out in the street. And he's going to transform people. And they're going to, and some of them are going to come right into this place. They may not look like you. They may not act like you. They may have tattoos all over the body. They may have earrings and nose rings and eye rings. I don't know. <laughs> They have mirror wear these days. But I want to tell you something. You're going to see, and you're going to get jealous because they're going to know God. They're going to provoke you and me to jealousy like we do to Israel because Israel wonders how come we can love our God so much and they don't love theirs that much. That's going to happen. So my... Advice is to get ready. Get ready. Get ready so that you don't judge, but you love. And if they provoke you, you say, hallelujah. God's bringing me up a little higher. God's trying to get me a little more. I want to tell you, that's not the way always the way. I, I started that way. I started in the hippies when I was 17 years old, and my deacons came against me. Because they didn't understand it. They didn't understand girls in short dresses and guys in long hair. They didn't understand their ways, the way they were doing things. And I was trying to say, and I'm 17, and I have men 50 and 60 years old, and I'm saying to them, hang on. Pray for them. God is changing them. And God began to change them. And we we had an entire group of, of uh of, I, I, I think it was 45 before uh, the enemy finally got in and helped start breaking us up because we didn't understand what we were doing. We didn't have a cutoff like we do now of the enemy. But God changed those people. There are people out of that group that still serve God today. 
Years later, God allowed me to help facilitate another youth revival. In Greenville, Texas, my home city, and we saw 75 youth practically from off the streets coming into our church every Wednesday night. And many of them are still serving God today. Did they act right? No, I, I was the security. I was trying to stop a lot of public displays of affection, PDAs. Because they every every chance they got around the corner. <laughs> the fact is, you may have to help, but love them. Love them. Love them. Let's stand. I'm enlisting warriors today. Yeah. I'm enlisting watchmen today. Because yeah. I, 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 I think that there needs to be a time when you surrender to God in these areas. Yes. Brother Ricky, can you play in the key of D? I sure can. We'll just start that, and we're going to see what God does. The fact is... That you have to have a time where you say, I am enlisting in God's army. I'm enlisting as a watchman on the wall. I want to be that prayer warrior for God. I want to hear what God's saying to me and what God's saying to the church. And I want to stop the enemy. I want to be that warrior in prayer. If that's you, I want you to say, yes, amen. Wow. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to thank you on God's behalf. Because this is God asking you to do that. Because I, when I leave here, I won't know what you do. But God will, and he's, help, he's wanting to help you. Now, you're, you, you don't have to be a, a, um, a warrior that takes everybody, every enemy out right at the beginning. Sometimes you got to start being trained. If you had not been an intercessor, you, you need some training in intercessory prayer. You need to understand you're standing for your family, you're standing for your church, you're standing for your nation. That, that start there, start there. And God will begin to reveal things to you. So Father, I pray for everyone that said they're going to be watchmen. They're going to be warriors. I pray God that you will have your way in their life and you will do the work in them necessary to stop the enemy. To stop his schemes, to stop his plots, to stop his arrows, to stop his plans against the people of God, against this church, against this pastor, against the families in this church, against our church in general, against all churches that are truly serving God. We pray for our state, our nation, and our world. Yes. Father, I bless your name today. Jesus, you're the only way. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. I want to be a watchman on the wall. Oh, yes. A warrior who will never fall. Yes. I want to be your man or your woman. That's right. This very day. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour out that which I need. Let the anointing flow forever so that we may see. See the revelation of our God. 
open up his word to us. Let as never before. Oh, we will no longer be what we were. That's right. We've changed this day. We've shifted the gears. We've moved from standing still in neutral to drive. Some of us have shifted in the first, second, even third, even fourth gear or more. We've been shifted today into a new place in God. We've been shifted today. And by the authority of God, by that rod of his authority, I come against every evil that's tried to come against your people in this place. I come against every sickness, every disease. I come against high blood pressure. I come against pancreatitis. I come against kidney problems. I come against back yes. and neck and, and uh, other health problems. Yes. I come against every problem that this people has today. Amen. And I say over this people, Hallelujah. I proclaim healing in Jesus' name. And I say by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed now. Yes. Hallelujah. Miracle now. Pain leave now. Everything come in alignment now. If you have anything like that, then you ought to claim it right now. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. His healing is mine. Yes, glory is. be to God. Hallelujah. His healing is mine. Yes, glory. It has taken place on the cross. It's been given forever and a day. But now, right now, his healing is mine. Oh, yes, it is, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. He's filled me. Oh, he's filled me. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've noticed one thing that there's several people that have had overwhelming mental thoughts bombardment in your mind I think someone here has had problems with, uh, with some of your children being wayward and you just can't get it off your mind I think someone here has had mental issues and where literally it's like the devil is bombarding you with thoughts that are binding you. And we're saying breaking the change, but there's some chains that need to be broken right now. It's literally tormenting spirits. Come on. Yes. Some of you have opened the door. You need to close doors. Yeah. I've already mentioned that. Anger, disillusionment, depression, all those doors of negativity that has kept you from believing for greater. Those that have had their children on their minds so much and you're so burdened for them. Let me tell you, you can only carry so much burden. You have to give it to God. You have to give it to God. Love those children. Love them, love them, love them, love them. Don't preach at them. Don't preach. Uh, they've already heard the truth. You've already given the truth. They know the truth. Love them, love them, love them. God, I pray for those children to come in right now back to the kingdom of God. I pray that every bondage will be broken. Every chain will be loosed. I pray right now, God, that they will come to their right mind and they will see I need to be home. Home with God home and with my family. I need to be home to, to the things of God. They may not be physically home, but they will be there in heart and mind. Father, in the name of Jesus.
Yes. And those Lord. tormenting spirits, I come against them. If that's you today, every, every head is bowed, every eye is closed. This is between me, me, you, and God. If that's you, raise your hand. Thank you. Put it down. Quickly, put it down. Put it down. Thank you. Anyone else? Quickly. Quickly. Overwhelming thoughts. Overwhelming thoughts. Bombarding your mind. This is the time to let go. This is the time to get prayer help. Yes. Okay, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, one more. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now. I pray right now. Every thought that is not of God, every thought that's of the enemy, every thought that's bombarded the spirit and the mind of your people, I come against it right now. And right now, God, I shut it down in Jesus' name. Shut your mouth. Yes. Devil. Hallelujah. Shut your mouth. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, Lord. Yes. In Lord. Jesus' name I pray. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Now I want to say one more thing to you. There's a shift in the shift that's happening in the transition. God's trying to shift you from being an inferior servant mind. You know, you know, we're servants of God. Can you say amen? But and Jesus came to be a servant. But it's one thing to serve God willingly. It's another thing to have an inferiority complex about it and think that's all you are. Because you are not all that. You are a son and daughter of God. Father said to Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Paul said to Timothy, my beloved son. God adopted us. Romans 8, 15. God adopted us as children. And he is saying to you, I'm your father. You're really my child. You're not my servant. You're my child. You're my family. Thank you for serving me willingly. But I am your personal father. He said, he's saying to you, my beloved son or daughter. He's saying, my, because you're his. You're his. He's saying beloved because he you're accepted. Yes. yes. You're approved. You're forgiven. You're his. And he's saying son or daughter because yes. you are family. Praise God. You're family. And you're of a royal type. Don't hang your head down because people told you you were this or you were that or you think this or that of yourself. Put your head up. That's right. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child. Actually, I'm royalty. This world, this world may not accept me, but my father, who is a king, he accepts me. And he's got me in training. He's got me in training to be a royalty, to take over as king one day. Because he said his children will rule over the nations. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, I pray Lord. that in this transition, yes, Lord. that we transition from being an inferior servant to being sons of and daughters of God. Not just a thought in our head and not just a praise when we come to church, but an everyday understanding. I am your child. Yes. You are my father. And you will protect me, watch over me, and help me survive everything in this life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Let me, let me remind you of the, if you want to be part of our partnership, do that. Judy will be back there. In fact, she's on her way uh, back there. If you need uh, any special prayer, besides what I've already said, I don't know what else it would be necessarily, but I've said a lot. <laughs> But uh, if you need special prayer, I will be right here for a little while. We're not going to prolong this. 
But also, if you, yes, sir. Brother Pearson said that if you decide to do a monthly support, be sure to give him a note of how what the amount is because that's what they add to their to their budget, and and they also expect you to bring that in. But also, if you have a special offering toward the headquarters, toward our leadership conference coming up, um, or anything else that we talked about, child sponsorship, please do that. We love you. We praise God. If you don't do any of that, we still love you. And we praise God for you and believe in God for greater. God bless you. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise this morning? Have we heard from the Lord today? Now, I knew we'd go over a little bit today. Enjoy the rest of your day. We, we don't have church tonight. And um, I do want you to go by and speak to them as you're leaving this morning. If you do need special prayer, don't leave. There's a powerful anointing on this man of God this morning. Uh, God bless you. You're at liberty, and we'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you. Amen. Come on up if you need prayer today.